Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 11th, 1111 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Capricorn be affected by November 11th? 11, 11, 11. Angels and spirits, uh, spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At the bottom, we have the Hierophant. So if we have Taurus within our natal chart or Taurus within our lives, it's going to affect us very much at our root. It's going to come through much more powerfully. This part of our personality or these people in our lives are going to have a greater effect on us than we realize. And then we have the lovers, which is Gemini energy. Again, if we have Gemini within our natal chart or in our lives, they again have a very powerful impact on us. We have the five of wands. A battle comes up, something that we have fought before. Is it that we have fought before? No, yes, it is. It's, it's something that we've fought about before. There's some sort of like bickering coming forward. Like it starts off as, as something rather benign and then it, it just becomes really angry it's like you know and, and finger pointing and you said this and you did this so so be aware of that we have the moon here and moon is pisces energy so we have pisces within our natal chart it comes through very powerfully in our inner selves or within our lives and the six of pentacles there's a need for balance and coming in there's a need for a sense of of harmony especially around around finances then we have our emotional energy we have the Hierophant coming through again, again, Taurus energy. We have the King of Cups, Water Sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, coming through very powerfully as a king. The Page of Pentacles, Earth Sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is, of course, us coming through as a student, also as a child to, to the Hierophant. For somebody, there's a sense of, of somebody in power, somebody of authority, all right? That there's there's a sense of I've I've learned a lot from them and they've they've touched me emotionally and there's there's a connection with this person. This person, this person might be past okay, or this person is just very wise, like very wise has has lived a long time or a good amount of years, and then we have the four of swords, and the four of swords is is respecting respecting the journey that we've been on, respecting everything that we've been through, knowing that. 
a part of us has been in the hibernation for a really long time. And this is a time where that part of ourselves starts to come out and there's a sense of being guarded. It moves us to the seven of pentacles, which is patience, patience, have faith. And then the knight of wands, fire sign, energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius coming forward. There's a sense of impulsiveness. We want to work things out, think things through. We're going to be more impulsive than we would, we would like to admit. So just be aware of that. We're going to really see ourselves as wanting to be very feet planted on the ground, very stable, very connected, very insightful. And yet there's going to be times here where we're like, oh, just screw it all, <laughs> you know, just move forward, just do something. So just be aware in the public arena, we're, we're going to want to kind of tone that down a little bit. Our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Not our chakra energy, I do apologize. This is the energy we need to be mindful of. And this is the the king of swords. This is air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is somebody who's very manipulative with their words and very manipulative with what they're letting forward. Okay. So just be aware of this, that somebody is going to know how to push our buttons and they're going to do so rather gleefully. Then we have, now we have our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels. This is divine wisdom. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. This is divine wisdom guiding us, leading us forward. There is going to be a sense of, I just know, or I, I just feel led. And that's because first of all, it's 11, 11, it's November 11th. So the 11th month of the 11th day. And this is a time where our angels are really connecting with us in a very powerful way, in a very real way. So let's talk about this day. This day is, is powerful because it's a master number. 1111 11 is powerful. It is a powerful number combination. 11 and 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. We are also going to find that this time connects us with our angels. It connects us with our spirit guides. There's not going to be that barrier holding us back. So if we need to meditate on something, if we need to you know pray about something, if we need to connect with divinity about something, today's the day to do it. Now, 1111 11 is also the first quarter moon, which is in Aquarius. So what we're going to feel, feel here and what we're going to see is that we're assessing things. We're going to feel like I need to look at things. This is why we're going to be, need to be very mindful of just charging forward and just going after because spirit's saying here like, no, 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 slow down, slow down, look, see, gain an understanding because we're assessing the situations and Aquarius brings love in our dreams to the table. It brings it to the forefront. What do we want? What do we love? What do we need? And so this is going to be a time where we're really assessing this. Now, historically on November 11th, Okay, this is the day of the Amersis. This is the day in which the end of World War I happened, the Great War, where the treaties were signed at 11 a.m. Paris time on November 11, 1918. And the greatest war the world had known up until that point, the greatest horror, the greatest death, the greatest tragedy came to an end. And this is going to be a time where that energy is a part of us. The sense of remembering, the sense of pain, the sense of, of suffering, the sense of fighting this sense of, of chaos. And it comes through a little bit as chaos within us. And it's something that we've, we've been through before. These are like old wounds coming up, old arguments. I actually see it kind of like children bickering, you know, and it gets out of hand. And all of a sudden one person starts yelling mom, because they pulled our hair or, you know, they hit us or we hit them. And it's just ex escalated. So do be mindful of that, especially around siblings or people who are just really, really close to during this time. And I'm just going to take a sip of water. <clears throat> we're going to be looking at things quite differently now again because on this day it's it is the Amherst it is remembrance day the commonwealth gives a minute of silence on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month and so this is going to be a time where we need to give almost a moment of silence for everything that's happened this day but also for the intensity that the world has faced after after World War One, after the Great War, after, you know, so much pain and suffering and how so much more pain and so much more suffering has come. November 11th is also Global God's Day, where all walks of faith, all deities are seen and, and worshipped and connected with. Angelically, 1111 is telling us that our angels are connecting with us and to pay attention 
to pay attention to the path that we're on, pay attention to our surroundings, to our emotions, because messages are coming our way and they're coming strongly. As a star seed 1111 appears, as we are awakening to our spiritual purpose and our mission here on earth, why we're here on this earthly plane. 1111 spiritually has us reflecting on why we're here and where we're going. And 1111 also represents the spiraling twin strands of our DNA coming into consciousness. And so a lot is here. Doorways are opening. We're being told to be conscious and to be aware as our spirit guides and our angels connect with us, as we're seeing our path come forward, as we're seeing and aligning with our soul's purpose, and as we are waking up and paying attention to our deeper self, to the part of us that we usually ignore. It moves us to the Hierophant. It moves us to this place of power. The Hierophant in medieval times was the Pope, and the Pope in the medieval world was the most powerful person. So be aware of this. Be aware that power, as we embrace it, starts coming forward. But it's a spiritual power. It's a power of an instinct. It's a power of our traditions. It's a power of the things that if we turn away from this, we turn away from a very key component of who we are and where we're headed. It leads us to the lovers. The lovers is, is interesting, and it's very interesting. We have five, and then we have six. We have this progression within our, our rooted self of where we're headed and what we're going and what we want and what we need. And we're falling in love. But we're not falling in love in the way that the world kind of tells us that we should fall in love. They have to look this way. They have to have this job. They have to be like this or that. We're starting to fall in love with what we are truly seeing, not just the illusion of it. We're looking deeper into things. It's not just the surface value anymore. We're starting to see our worth and our passion. We're starting to connect with our worth and our passion. We're starting to see the steps to take that guide us forward to more, that connect us with something new that bring us to the next level. And so here, as we embrace our hearts and our passions, it's not a world, please love me. It's how do I love within this world? How do I embrace my soul and where it is that I want to be as I stand before me, as I stand seeing me and seeing those around me? Love starts to come in and there's a sense here of things not having been fair, been off balance financially or with what we value as much as money. And this is a time where the give and take, it has to be. We can't just give and give or take and take. There needs to be a balance. And we're connecting with that balance. We're seeing that balance. We're moving towards that balance. And it's changing us. But it's also inwardly. It's like, I'm done. I'm done with things being unfair. We have to be very mindful. Because as we're done with things being unfair, we are also connecting with our fears, with the moon. Now, it can also be that this amplifies, and it is also that this amplifies the first quarter moon in Aquarius, that this moon is very powerful for us, that we start to see things and say, well, do I love this? You know, does this bring me joy? Can I move forward this way? What are my passions? What have I been putting off? Now, here's the thing when we start to connect with our dreams, not the I cross my fingers and wish for it type of dream, but deep down what we long for within our soul, within the very depths of our belly and what we really want within our lives. When it starts to come forward, it's terrifying. When it starts to come forward, we think, oh my gosh, you know, how can I do this? How can I move forward this way? How can I embrace this? How can I, you know, how can I have this? What if I lose it? And having seen people obtain their dreams and lose their dreams, that's, that's a heartbreaking place to be. And it's no wonder that we're afraid of it. And so here, when we're seeing the moon, we're seeing our fears, but we're also seeing our passions and our desires and our places forward. And we're starting to say, what is it that I want? And why is it that I'm so afraid of it? And then the chaos comes in. This could be internal chaos. This could be our own internal self bickering and, and starting to talk us out of things. Oh no, you couldn't possibly. Oh no, you can't possibly do this. Oh no, you can't possibly do that. And it's like, why? Why do I get to be pushed away from what I deeply want? And why is it chaos is more familiar than me to me than joy? Why is it that discord and, you know, trauma and drama is more familiar to me than dreams and passions and desires and joys and celebrations and success? It moves us to the Hierophant. Again, this way of claiming our throne. Taliesin, the most gifted bard in all of the Celtic world, the one who was thought to be nothing when he was little, 
claiming a throne, claiming a power. I want to say like divine right. It's, it seems guided that way, though I don't believe in divine right. You know, that sense that one person is chosen to rule above all others. But it's our divine right to be guided in our lives to the place that we need to stand, to the journey we need to embrace, to the path that we need to walk forward in. And we claim our throne and we claim the keys to our conscious and subconscious, the keys to heaven, the keys to abundance, the keys to greater understanding as we connect on this day of God's, you know, on this God's day. And it moves us to our heart. It moves us to the King of Cups who realizes I cannot be everything to everyone. And I can rule only through example of how I live and how I'm moving forward. And I wrap myself in my heart chakra and the world is chaos around me and emotions run so high. But I walk forward knowing who I am, knowing what I need, knowing my progression to myself and what I desire. And it brings us then to being students of our prosperity because we become aware of our hearts, but we've become aware of our emotional self. Now this is hard and near impossible when outside people have so much power over our lives. So it can feel like this is a battle. Like this is something that needs to be addressed. Like I'm going to call out that, you know, when, when we're moving forward and yet this person can come in and sweep away and take everything that we've worked for, you know, all our dreams, all our joys. And we can think, well, what the heck's fair about that? Spirit is saying here, would you not love them? Would you, would you not go after what it is that you want? Does the fear of loss get to, <laughs> get to surpass the beauty of our dreams? And that's a big question because for a lot of people it does. And it moves us here to the page of, of pentacles, being a student of ourselves, of our prosperity, of our abundance, of the way that we get to move forward, of the seeds that we are planting, of the way that we are embracing our lives. This is a time where we are a student. We don't know everything and that's okay. We're expected to be the learners. We're expected to be the discoverers. Our angels and our spirit guides are guiding us that way to see and gain and understand. And it leads us to stepping back. It leads us to stepping into ourselves. It leads us to, to knowing that a part of us has been asleep for a really long time. And we have to honor the road that we've been on, all the hurts, all the pains, all the disappointments, everything in between, and honor that path because we start to honor ourselves. And we start to see that we even sleep in our armor. We even sleep in that protected cocoon that we wrap ourselves in. And it moves us to the seven of pentacles. Be patient. Be patient and have faith that the prosperity is coming. Be patient and have faith that we are walking forward towards what we have planted and what we desire and where it is that we need to be. The seven of pentacles is, is wealth and abundance. The seven of pentacles is telling us, I see you. I see you and I see what we're building. I see what we're growing. But we can't make the tomatoes ripen before they are ready. We can pick the vegetables before they're ready. We can, we can, but they will not be sweet and they will not be good. They will just simply be. The Knight of Wands, impulsiveness, but also charging forward, a sense of fire and passion guiding us and thinking, if not now, then I will never. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes if we do not just simply jump, if we think about it too much, we will never do it. But here, it's being mindful that we need more than just passion. We need tenacity and determination to follow with it and to know what we are sacrificing for, to get to where it is that we want to be and to what it is that we desire. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's the star. That's our dreams and our wishes. They can become everything to us and surpass anything else. It can be that all we see right now is our dreams. And that can be overwhelming. So embracing our dreams but not making them our master, that's going to be something that's quite intensely, well, intense during this time. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is flexibility. This is the sacral chakra. This is where our sexual energy is held. This is where our emotional energy is held, our creative energy. And this is where our trauma and drama from this life and past life is held. So it's all there. And we're being told to be flexible. Sometimes this trauma and this drama can make it feel like we're covered in stone. To be flexible, to, be em to embrace 
our soul and the fluidity of ourselves. That's going to be important. Our subconscious rooted message is the hangman. We see things differently than everybody else. We see things differently than we saw things yesterday. Embracing this different way of looking at the world, this different way of looking at ourselves, and it brings us to our subconscious inner self, and that's the sun. Happiness, joy, success, letting ourselves shine bright, Letting ourselves move forward in blessings. The sun is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. Does it bring with it people taking us by eyes? Absolutely. People saying, oh, well, you know, you don't get to be happy. I get to be happy. So I'm going to steal your happiness away from you. Yeah, that's because people are, are like kindergartners. You know, we don't think that we can share. You have it, I want it. I'm going to take it from you. No, we can, we can all have it. We can all shine with our own beautiful intention and light and brilliance. And we don't have to, you know, be jealous of anybody else though that's hard not to be jealous that, that is hard our subconscious emotional self that's the lovers coming through again mirroring our rooted message with the hierophant and the lovers we have that coming forward passion and love and falling in love with life again and embracing that passion in the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine coming forward within us knowing that we have to love ourselves not simply be loved that's not enough and letting ourselves see what it is that we truly want as we are being blessed it moves us to our subconscious public arena self and that's the two of pentacles ambition ambition can cloud everything else we will forget to balance ourselves as we go after you know more and more and more but we need to be balanced and this could be a time where we stumble a little bit in our ambition where we can see you know things not going as smoothly as we would want them to be because spirit's saying you're forgetting you and so if i have to make things kind of stumble kind of trip up then i'm going to for you to put your feet back on the ground and take a breath and connect all right all right capricorn i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i'm sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you i love you all and stay safe Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and intensity of this day of 11-11, November 11th. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Capricorn, and may you have a blessed 11-11.